Hi everyone, I wanted to make a quick video uh, to show you how we can quite easily disprove the Aryan migration theory. Uh, I've seen a lot of things on the internet and it looks like a lot of people in India don't believe in this model and it's not correct and it's very easy to disprove uh, using just genetic data. So I'm going to show you some data in a minute that disproves it quite easily but just to quickly look at what it is the Aryan migration theory. Uh, if we look at this map here, this is basically what they're saying with this whole Aryan migration theory is that uh, you can see that there's three arrows going into this region of the Indus River which is currently in Pakistan uh, but this applies to all of India and Pakistan but uh, I just drew the arrows here on the Indus River for some other work that I was doing for another video but this applies to all of India and Pakistan so what they're saying is that we have DNA from Steppe and from Iran N and from ASI so most South Asians are a mixture of ASI, Iran N and Steppe and they're saying that these people the Iran N and the Steppe invaded India or migrated to India at some point where there was already this ASI type of DNA now the reason why they say this is because Indians and Pakistanis have DNA in common with most other parts of Eurasia so that includes the steppe and Iran and and also ASI and because we have DNA in common with all of these people it makes it somewhat easy for them to argue that there were migrations from these regions into India. What's actually happening is that early humans originated in South Asia and from there dispersed into Eurasia. They may have originated in Africa and then gone to India but they certainly dispersed into Eurasia from India so if we look at this map this map shows how people are dispersing from India to Iran and to the steppe and this explains why Indians have DNA from the steppe and from Iran and an even more distant A and E type of DNA which is like MA1 type stuff so it's actually quite easy to show that these Eurasians like the steppe and Iran and actually originated in India. We can see this by just running a simple PCA or we could even do more complex analysis using formal stats but for now I'm just going to show you the PCA. Okay guys so if we look at this PCA here on the bottom right you can see Ong and Bihor these are uh, very tribal Indians. Ong is from the Andaman Islands and Birhor is from uh, so East India and this is what uh, these uh, geneticists would consider to be ASI so this is on the bottom right. On the top right you can see AG3 and MA1, Bowtie, this is A and E and towards the bottom left you can see Ganjdare, that's Iran N, so that's Iran N Ganjdare Anatolian etc and in the middle you can see that there's a step DNA where it says Rus step E Neolithic you can see Sintashta, Yamnaya, Bulgaria that whole cluster which is in between AG3 and Anatolian is step DNA and right in the middle of this PCA is modern South Asians um, where you can see Baloch, SS2, Burusho this whole cluster is South Asians you can see Gujarati D so in the middle you've got the South Asians what's happening is that if we go from the bottom right which is ASI um, and we go to towards the top left we, we get to the South Asians which is that cluster in the middle at that point it's still a straight line from the bottom right to the to the middle with the South Asians but after the North Northern South Asians that whole cluster of Burusho and Gujarati, Patanis in there, Sindhi, all the Indo-Aryans, Indians and Pakistanis are in there all the Indo-Aryans are in that cluster so once we get to that cluster it splits up and one direction goes to Iran and Ganjdare one direction goes towards Anatolian one goes towards AG3 and MA1 and the other one sort of goes in the middle in between so we don't know how these guys are exactly dispersing from this PCA but we can see that these groups are dispersing from South Asia. So from South Asia people are leaving and some are going north and becoming MA1 from Russia. Some are going sort of west or southwest and going into Iran and becomes Ganjdari. And some are going towards the steppe and towards Anatolia and they become Anatolians. But 
these other groups outside of South Asia, the Iranians, Anatolians, the Russians, they're not, they don't have anything in common. They seem to split up from the South Asians, hence the South Asians are in the middle of this PCA. Now, this is a simple PCA, so there's not so much examples in it, but I have a more complicated one with more samples in there, which looks somewhat similar, but has a lot more ancient samples, more diverged peoples, but that pretty much shows the same thing. So we can have a look at that one. Okay guys, this one is a bit more complicated. There's a lot more samples here. But if you look towards the top right, you can see it's got B, B -I -R sg And then going towards the center, you can see there some of the South Asians here. Gujarati, Burusho, Sindhi Pakistan, Punjabi, uh, Rajput, and uh, BEB. These are all South Asians that um, are in the... Uh, Reich data set so I don't know about some of these samples I don't know about Raj is some sort of Raj but some of these are South Indians um, Villara uh, I think the BEB is Bengali then you've got Gujarati uh, Burusho, Sindhi Pakistan you've got Patans in there Kalash and also Tajik all the way into Afghanistan Northern Afghanistan the Tajiks are kind of Northern Afghan type people uh, I think the Tajiks here are the Ishkashim um, so what we can see is that if we look to the left and bottom left of these South Asians, we can see all the other Eurasians splitting up from the South Asians. So the ones that are going north, uh, the very ancient ones, you can see at the top of the South Asians, you got Russia MA1, Kostenki to its left, Russia Hunter Gather to its left, and to the top left you got Norway Mesolithic, that's going to be Western Hunter Gatherer. So the Western Hunter Gatherers are sort of very distant they, they've split up from the south asians quite early so they're splitting up from south asians quite early and then further below the western hunter gatherer sort of on the left but in the middle you've got step eneolithic andronovo step and then further down from that you've got ukraine eneolithic latvia bronze age and then further down from that you have all the way to the bottom israel c that's um israel charcolithic i believe close to that you have Anatolian MLBA so what this is saying is that all of these people with the um, ancient Western hunter-gatherers the Latvian Bronze Age Latvian hunter-gatherers um, the uh, early Neolithic in Europe all of these different peoples the steppe as well uh, these guys are all splitting up after they've split out of South Asia so the South Asians are still in the middle but there's nothing else, there's nobody else that's in the middle of this graph where everybody is splitting out from. So if you understand that these groups have to split away from each other, so at one point there's a common ancestor and these groups split away from each other. When we look at this in the PCA, it always shows that the South Asians are in the middle and these other groups are splitting out from the South Asians. So if they came into South Asia and invaded at some point, they would have had to split away from each other and then invade South Asia. So for instance, if you have that South Asians have Iran N and Step DNA, if they both invaded India, that means that before they invaded India, they must have split away from each other. But if we look at this analysis, they don't split away from each other in any way, but South Asians are in between them, but they don't have any common ancestor other than South Asians. So there's no other tree or phylogenetic tree that unifies Iran N and step DNA they have to originate in South Asia now I have other PCAs and other analysis that includes Africans and East Asians and it shows the same thing that South Asians are in the middle in terms of Iran N and step DNA so there's no phylogeny that shows that humans left Africa and then split into Iran N and uh, step and then they both invaded South Asia what would have happened is that if they came from Africa they would have gone to India and then when they left India one group is going north and one group is going um, south west and and the one that's going north is step DNA and the one that's going west is uh, Iran N and if we actually look at this graph you can actually see that if you, if you look at this graph closely you can see that the Tajiks are actually going towards the step from the South Asians where whereas the Batans and uh, the Sindhis are a bit more towards Iran N or the Makranis. So if you look at Makrani and Tajik, you can see that this separation actually happens in South Asia where if you for instance look at Georgia Kotias or Iran Ganjdare, 
and then if you look at the steppe, the South Asian is kind of in between them. The, the Tajik especially is in between Iran and Iran Chalcolithic and the steppe. And so what that's showing is that around the point of the Tajikistan, a lot of the separation is happening. And so from Tajikistan, from ancient Tajikistan, people are going north and they're going into the steppe and they're going south as well and they're going into Iran. And so this is all dispersing from South Asia. And so when you look at this DNA, you can make the argument, but it's a weak argument that the steppe and Iran and actually invaded South Asia. But that's just because South Asians have DNA from steppe and Iran and but the reason for that is not because they invaded, it's because they actually came outside of South Asia. And that's pretty easy to see because there's no good theory. It's impossible to create a theory that Iran N and Step DNA can, can exist without having gone through South Asia and having come through South Asia. So once we understand that Iran N and Step DNA actually came from South Asia and that accounts for the genetic similarity between them, then you cannot use that genetic similarity to argue that people invaded South Asia. So the genetics is very easy on this and this is a very simple uh, look that we've just had but we can go into more detail about this but it will show the same thing. And one final thing, this is actually quite interesting. If we look at my PCAs, if you two go back and look at the PCAs, you'll see that some of the southern South Asians like Baloch and Makrani and Bataan to some extent, they're sort of Afghan types, uh, the southern peoples, they are more shifted towards the Iran N people and the Tajiks and the Kalash and the Rules, they're more shifted towards the steppe. And if you actually look at, if you actually watch my other video, it actually goes into and it actually explains why this is the case. It's because a lot of the DNA that went into the steppe took this northern route. And in this image I posted here, I've actually got two arrows, one going to Iran N and one going to the steppe. We can actually clearly see the separation when we look at the, the PCAs. So genetically, we can actually see that the Makranis and the Balochis and the Patans to some extent have a bit more of this Iran N, whereas the the Tajiks and the Rors and the Juts and the Kalash, they have more of this step type stuff in comparison. is because there's two dispersals happening from South Asia. There's a more southern one that leads to Iran N and there's a more, nor there's a more northern one which goes up the Indus and then maybe from sort of north, from the KPK, it goes up um, up into sort of Tajikistan or Central Asia and then into the steppe region. And we can actually genetically see this with the separation of the Tajiks and the Kalash um, compared to the Makran when we break this down into the PCA. So it's actually quite interesting that actually we can actually see this geographically with the two different directions that people are dispersing and genetically it matches up with that so that's definitely something that we can look into in more detail and really get a more detailed understanding of how these people are dispersing from South Asia. The analysis I've shown you so far is actually quite simple but we can go much further and deeper into it in the future hopefully.